All right, just a quick disclaimer before the video starts. Just wanted to let you guys know that I don't work for CASA and I'm not a lawyer, so take anything I say with a grain of salt. It's just meant to be used as a guide. So it's there to open the discussion. So if I've got anything wrong or you want me to talk about anything else, just leave a comment and we'll address it sometime in the future. So thanks for watching. All right, just before we start, I need to give you guys a bit of a background on what the difference is between a commercial pilot and a hobbyist pilot. So a hobbyist pilot is someone who's uh, flying purely for recreational purposes and only having fun. And a commercial pilot is someone who's looking to fly for financial gain and make money from the work that they're doing. So obviously that's a pretty gray area because what is financial gain? You know, it's like someone who's a uh, Instagram influencer who makes money from their posts. Are they doing it for financial gain? Um, it's, it's an interesting gray area and it's one that I'll probably discuss in later videos, but um, as far as I know, I'll leave it up to lawyers at the moment. All right, now that you know that, here's the video. Welcome to the second video that I'm doing about understanding the drone laws here in Australia. Uh, as you guys know, in the first video that I did, I focused on the standard operating procedure and how it affects hobbyists. In this video, I'm gonna dive into the standard operating procedure and how it affects commercial pilots and what you're gonna to need to do if you wanna become a commercial drone pilot. All right, there's a couple of things you're gonna to need to get started. The first is your ABN, and you get that when you register your business with ATSIC. Um, and the next is your ARN. You get your ARN, which is your aviation reference number from CASA, and you just send off your birth certificate and some other personal information to verify with them. And it's like your driver's license with CASA, so you use that whenever you're dealing with CASA-related documentation and stuff like that. Okay, so once you've got all your paperwork sorted out, the next thing you probably wanna do, and it's just how I think about it, is um, think about uh, how big the drone is that you want to fly for the job that you want to do. So basically if the, the drone is uh, under two kilograms and you are working within the standard operating procedure that we spoke about in the previous video, um, then that means that all you have to do is head to the Know Your Drone website, do the basic quiz. Um, once you've done the basic quiz there and passed, uh, you'll be able to go in into MyCASA's website and register yourself and your business and your drone uh, that's under two kilo. And as long as you're flying within standard operating procedure, you've done everything you need to um, to be a commercial pilot under CASA's law. Um, the only issue arises really when you want to work outside the standard operating procedure in any way, and that includes flying drones over two kilograms. All right, so if you want to fly outside the standard operating procedure, it gets a little bit more difficult. Uh, at that point, you're going to need to obtain um, certificates and licensing. Uh, so the first thing you're going to need is a remote operator certificate, otherwise known as a REOC, uh, and that is usually obtained by a business. Um, and then within that business, there'll be a, a series of different assignments and jobs for people to do, like chief pilot, chief maintenance officer, chief safety officer, and those people will be responsible for those tasks. And that just makes sure that every single flight, every single mission is safe and efficient. The REOC doesn't really reference to any one person, but an organization and just allows um, for an organization to uh, safely manage a series of pilots and different tasks to, to make sure that their drone fleet uh, stays on point. Once you have your business um, all certified with uh, the remote operator certificate, the next thing you'll need to do is find pilots to fly the missions for you. And that's where the remote pilot's license or REPL comes into it because the person or the chief pilot or the organization with the REOC um, will generally obviously have some pilots within that organization. And if not, they will outsource to uh, pilots who carry the remote pilot license and that remote pilot license is, allows you um, to fly outside the standard operating procedure, assuming that you have the right authorization from CASA in which the person with the remote operator certificate will apply. So basically, just to, to um, rehash, um, someone with a remote operator certificate can apply to CASA to work outside the standard operating procedure using license pilots to do the work, but they will have to apply and get permission in writing from CASA in order to do it. So it becomes a pretty complicated process and usually costs plenty of money and takes plenty of days. So it's one of those things we try and avoid. 
So generally the organization holds the remote operator certificate or REOC and the person or the individual pilot holds the remote pilot's license. If you think about it that way, that's usually the easiest way to, to remember it. So as I said before, trying to get approval from CASA is really expensive and time consuming. So whenever I'm flying missions, I'm trying to find ways um, to fly within the standard operating procedure and try and keep costs to a minimum. I find that clients appreciate that and it saves on time, money and paperwork. So um, that would be my advice to anyone starting out is try and look for uh, ways to get creative and work within the standard operating procedure as opposed to um, trying to find ways to work it's outside it because in my experience it's uh, just not worth it most of the time. All right, so uh, if you're thinking of becoming a commercial drone pilot, um, I can highly recommend it. It's a very fun industry to get into. Uh, you're always meeting new people and finding new friends uh, and working in creative and fun roles. Um, and I love being outside as well. It's always a good place to be. So um, find a reputable trainer, get your REPL first, your remote pilot's license first. Um, if you think that's a goer, then you can move on and do your remote operating certificate um, for the business that you would have started. And that'll put you in a good position to start doing commercial work. Um, and maybe start working outside the standard operating procedure after you've got um, permission from CASA. Just remember that just because you've got those certificates and license, you still need to get authorization from CASA and that's the big kicker. So um, I hope this video helps. Um, if it did, um, let me know. If it didn't, also let me know. Um, and don't forget to follow, like and subscribe across all the different platforms because there's lots of content to get out there and I really enjoyed doing it. So thanks guys again for watching.